guys. <laughs> yeah, hardly. You're now still enjoying them still, but wonderful entrance, something new every time you see him. Now we say having a little go at intimidating his opponent. See the wild just brush him off there. Let's have a look now at the relevant statistics. There you are, Lowell, six years older, both of them short, even for featherweights. Naz just four ounces inside the limit. Lowell a pound inside. And there are the uh, fight stats, and you can see Naz only 3.6 rounds averaging per fight, and Lowell the other way around, 6.3. And eight of Naz's wins have come in the second round, the round that he predicts he'll win this one in. Right, let's go back to the MC, Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is sanctioned and conducted under the rules of the World Boxing Organization, whose president, Senor Francesco Valcasel, is at ringside with supervisor John Montana from Arizona. The British Boxing Board of Control Supervisor is Mr. Simon Block and the steward in charge, Mr. Brian McAllister. The timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Jim Russell of Glasgow, and the judges at ringside appointed by the WBO, Mr. Louis Pavon from Puerto Rico, Mr. Jose Rivera from Puerto Rico, and Mr. William T. Connors from the United States of America. And in charge of tonight's action, officiating in his 126th contest, Ismail Fernandez, who officiates, but of course won't My score. Lord, the three judges will do the scoring here. Live from the SECC in Glasgow on Europe's premier sports channel, Sky Sports, and the big time boxing where it's big fight time. Promoted by Greg Warren for Sports Network and Catherine Morrison in association with our sponsors, Glasgow District Council for the City of Glasgow, the National City of Sport, and NBC, the Middle Eastern Broadcasting. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you the boxers for this, a 12 round contest of three minutes each round to decide the WBO featherweight championship of the world. Firstly, in the red corner, we're in the red trunks with the white trim, and uh, coming originally from Nigeria, now fighting out of Austria. From 19 professional contests, he has had 17 wins, 7 by way of KO, with 1 loss and 1 draw. He weighed in at 8 stone, 13 pounds, and comes to the ring tonight as the WBC International Featherweight Champion and the challenger for the title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Glasgow, Syed Lawal. Across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, wearing the leopard and coming from Sheffield and Vienna. In 20 professional contests, he is undefeated. 18 wins by way of KO. He weighed in at 8 stone, 30 pound and 12 ounces. He is Britain's most exciting fighter and the current WBO featherweight champion of the world, making the first defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible, unbelievable Prince Nassim Adair. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the referee for the contest, Mr. Wido Fernandez, will give his instructions to both boxers. Dead right, he's the most exciting. How good he is, we still don't exactly know. Maybe we'll know a little bit more tonight. Well, now is the time for a while to meet them eyeball to eyeball, and he still has not been prepared to do that. He's refused to, to meet uh, Naz's gaze all the way through the introductions. So now we'll find out if indeed he is intimidated. It's been some build up. People say they're going to be in front 
to Naz. Take the fight to him. I don't think that's a bad idea. As long as you keep your chin down nice and tight between your shoulders and uh, keep punching as you move forward. If you stay in front of Naz and don't throw any punches, then he's going to take you out. He can't back off. He has to go forward and try to get close. and just let him recover because this fight should be stopped that young fellow's legs are completely gone if this fight is not finished in the first round it's because Naz doesn't want to yet it's all over all over the most clinical finish seen in the British ring for some time and Prince Nazi Mohammed retains his WBO featherweight title Well, we didn't learn anything new, but we were reminded of the chilling power that Naz has with one single punch. That's all it took. All that training, all that road work, all that preparation for one punch. And the next work is over. A few boos around because people feel they've got short chains. Yeah, well, people were expecting. I'd hold for a little bit longer than there was promised. We were promised five minutes and we got like about 30 seconds. And I, don't, I haven't heard the official time yet. But I think people get a little bit disappointed. Competitive match, even if it's a short match, we don't mind, but it has to be competitive. Or a one punch start and finish is certainly not competitive. But breathtaking, wonderful power from Naz, but not a competitive match. So people are, yes, I think they're entitled to feel just a little bit disappointed. Next up should be Danny Alissier of uh, Puerto Rico, who's the number one contender. He bats, we'll ask a few more questions. There's the first knockdown. The I mean, very first punch of the fight. It's possible that Naz didn't really intend finishing the fight with one punch. Maybe he even surprised himself there. Maybe that was just a punch he threw. He stepped in with the punch. It was a wide hook. Maybe Naz at the time didn't really realise it was a knockout punch he was throwing. I think he would have liked to put his show on a little bit longer. But see, he can any goal. Supreme confidence. Just looking. Out it comes. Wide punch. Bang. Perfectly on the chin and it's all over. The referee could really have stopped it then because when, when Lawal got up he had nothing to offer, his legs were gone. I wondered if maybe Naz would back off and allow him to recover. He decided not to. One more punch, exactly doing exactly as he pleases. You could see the head rock backwards, it was some punch. Yeah, tremendous punching and tremendous power. And once again, we're amazed where Naz finds this power, where the power comes from. But uh, the fans are obviously going to feel cheated. There Two goes, extraordinary punches, and there's the second, the head goes right back, and that uppercut really sorted him out. So Naz is the champion, and here is the Ladies answer. and gentlemen, after 35 seconds of the first round, the referee has stopped the contest. The winner, and still featherweight champion of the world. So Naz seems happy enough. A job done in spectacular fashion. Two ruthless right-hand punches. And he's still the champion. We'll be talking to the man right after this break. Naz, congratulations. I think we are, you answered uh, one question we had, how the right hand was. I think the right hand's in pretty good shape. The right hand's perfect. As you see, I don't tell lies. When I make predictions, I make to knock him out. Now, he wasn't going to the second round, but I would have loved to do it in the second round because I predicted it. But at the end of the day, it hit him so hard, the first shot, and it put him down, basically. So, what the hell with the second round, you know? He was going, so he had to go. Did you know it was a, a meaningful punch when you, when you threw it? I knew it hit him bang on. I timed it so precise. I told everybody, everybody in my change was what I was going to do first round. And if it had hurt him, it had hurt him, and it did. It hit him with a beautiful, cracking timing shot. That's what a true professional is, a true world champion. So everybody out there who are listening, especially the fighters that want to fight for like sweet, seeing stupid people out in Britain, they get knocked out, Sparko. 
after you knocked him down the first time you just seemed to step back just for a fraction of a second seemed to almost as if you were waiting for the second round and then you came back in and there was a ruthless uppercut a ruthless uppercut i mean end of the day you've seen the shots yourself they were so timed precise i was so cool calm and collected i wasn't missing anything end of the day i knew what i had to do and the first round came it ended you know we were watching your face uh, during the ring walk and even when you got in the ring and you were stalking him, he looked to be a little bit intimidated. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's my opponent. I mean, I can't do anything about it, like that's him. I came here, uh, it's great in Scotland, I get a great buzz. The reception I got was unbelievable. I love the Scottish crowd and you never know I'm fighting here all the time. There's a few booing, I think they'd like to have seen a bit more of you. I think that's, that's the response. Well, you know, that's how it goes, boxing's boxing. I mean, I come out here and done my job. And I took him out with a perfect right hook and then carried on and took him out in the first round. First round and second round, they knew they were going to get a, a late round job anyway. I said second round, but it ended in the first early. We've seen a few boxers in uh, recent months saying how they're not in love with the game. You look as if you are absolutely in love with the game. I love the game. I always love the game. Boxing is a great game. It's the hardest sport art. But I've trained all my life from, from the age of seven. This, this is why I'm so good today. Um, I just... Thank my parents, my family, everybody behind me, and the main thing behind me is Allah, that is God. What's next? Do you think Danny Alicia, he's the number one contender, will you fight him next, or do you want to go for Azuma Nelson? I'll fight any featherweight, I'll fight any featherweight, any super bantamweight. Um, I might be even stepping up and soon come when I beat Azuma Nelson. I'm going to beat all of them. I'm going to bring so many world titles back to England, it's going to be untrue. I'm going to be a legend, and I said that from the start. We're off for a party now and I think you're going to uh, uh, join us. And I'm going to have a wicked party. <laughs> I am going to have a wicked party. I'm going to be flying out in the next week to the Caribbean. I'm going to be chilling. Before that. I've done my job. I've done you, my business. You sure have. Have you, got, have you got a word for Frank Bruno? Frank, he knows he can do it. Just get out there and do it. He knows he can do it. Good luck to Frank because he knows he can do it. You know you can do it, Frank. Okay, now see you later.